Well, the Burbot Bash is just around the corner. It's time to get prepared. Hey, I'm Adam Eklund. Welcome to Flaming Gorge Reservoir. Yeah, we're up here with Wyoming Game and Fish in the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources. Got a big crew up here today, probably close to 20 people, I think. We're here for two part. We want to stay late tonight and catch some burbot to tag them for the upcoming burbot bash. And a bunch of people wanted to come out and catch some lake trout. The fishing up here has been really good as of late. Got a few guys already on the ice. Let's uh, go catch up to them. There's very little snow on the ice at the gorge this year. So if you're headed out, don't forget some cleats. It is slick. Typically those lake trout do like the deep water habitats and a lot of times it's associated with the river channel or having the river channel nearby. Typically you'll find the lake trout anywhere from 40 feet to 60 feet and they'll come up typically on the bottom is where you'll see them but there's a lot of times suspended fish around 20 to 35 feet and always reel up to them as there's a very good chance that's a lake trout. Come on. You're looking at it. We're seeing a lot of what we think are lake trout. He bumped me. But we just can't seem to sink a hook into them. See if we can land them. Lost them again. That's crazy. That's, what, three in a row I lost? He didn't hit it hardly at all. Yeah, there's another fish down there. He was aggressive at least. Tika minnow, man. This Tika minnow is a... Have they? Nice little fish. Watch that. That's got a lot of hooks. That's a baby. There we go. That's a pretty small one, but that's okay. That's what we're here for. He'll smoke up nice. Here's that Tika minnow. So it's made by clam, and Mosley showed me this a few years ago. Just tip it with a little bit of cut bait. Pretty aggressive action on it. It's got a nose hook and a tail hook and a treble on the bottom and just use this very small piece of of sucker meat or chub meat or whatever you can find about that size is all you want to use pretty aggressive action though with this if you watch Mosley do it he, he jerks it pretty good and that fish came on it hard and gobbled it right up oh someone else had a bite looks like what's your reluctance why are you so reluctant to come through that hole that one hit the dead stick Sitting here aggressively jigging a, another bait, but this one hit the dead stick too, jig. It's kind of nice to catch one after losing three in a row, huh? 51 more to go. Ryan has a personal goal of catching 100 small lake trout this year. This is number 49. So it's gonna be a lot of work, but it's fun. It's worth it too. It's helping the fishery and we've been really enjoying a lot of fish. <laughs> you need help? It takes a lot of teasing before they finally commit. I had to reel almost halfway up the water column and there was two or three other ones with him and I kind of had to get a competition going. So. <laughs> I don't know if he won or lost. <laughs> that took some coercion. We're also concerned there's, don't lose it Mosley, too many of those out here for what's available and they're not growing as fast as they used to, so we want to see people take advantage of our pretty liberal uh, limit out here on them. 12 fish under 28, 24 in possession. Oh, there he is. He made that seem easy. These are just exceptional eaters. They're gonna have really red fillets, um, really firm fillets, and they're just great in a variety of ways on the, on the grill, in the oven. I smoke a lot of these. Yeah, they're just fantastic fish. You know, you hit the right day and the right times, and it can be really easy to catch 12 lake trout. That can be really fun and entertaining for families to come out and fish for them during the day. If you're coming up for this year's Burbot Bash, you should consider signing up for Buckboard Marina's Population Control Contest. There are over 100 small lake trout that have been tagged, and if caught, will automatically get you a cash reward and put you in for additional drawing. There is an entrance fee, $20 per person, and that's also going to get you in the drawing for a Camp Chef smoker. That happens. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. 
So the Berber Bash is next weekend. The biggest question on most people's minds when they come out for the Berber Bash is, how's the ice? Currently, the ice is building, thankfully, for this cold front. Hopefully it sticks around. We've only got about six, seven inches of solid clear ice going down just below the confluence. But we're building. Uh, we're getting some ice in the back of the bays, further down reservoir around Buckford, uh, Brenegers, Anvil Country. Pretty thick ice. It's over a foot. A lot thicker than where we were lake trout fishing. Our goal tonight is to catch and tag as many burbot as possible for this year's bash. You know, when burbot were discovered 15 years ago in the gorge, not many anglers knew how to target them. Ryan in that time has perfected techniques for burbot and catches quite a few of them. So I like to drill all my holes before I start burbot fishing at night, and that way I'm not worried about spooking fish when the burbot are really biting the most. And that gives me the opportunity to move gear around and then also jig from hole to hole without having to auger holes later when I should be targeting burbot. So I'm just using a glow-in-the-dark jig tipped with a little bit of sucker meat. So this is just a Yamamoto uh, grub. It's an Ica and glow-in-the-dark. I'll charge it with a UV light um, right before I drop it, and then I'll continually charge it throughout the night. Whenever I drop my jig, um, I always make sure my knot is pointed straight up or even towards the back. And that way when I drop it down in the water, it's going to sit horizontal. So that horizontal presentation really helps um, just get more bites. I go right to the bottom and then I reel it up just a little bit off the bottom. So it's just inches off the bottom. And then you set these jaw jackers. I've already got my sensitivity pretty light. So I always encourage people to use multiple lines. They have them at least six, which is what the regulation is on Flaming Gorge Reservoir. The rule that you have to remember is when you're using more than two rods, you need to have your name on all of your rods. So if you look up and down my line of poles here, you'll see it has basically my name and my address on each of those. So if a warden comes up and checks me, they can see that all the ones I'm fishing with in front of me are indeed mine and I'm the angler responsible for those lines. Another option for burbot is tip-ups. They're small, easy to pack, and can be very effective. They work. They, they don't set the hook for you, obviously, but, you know, with the, the ones we have now, the flags are, it's quiet enough here, you can usually hear them. And then mine have the little lights on them too, so after dark there'll be an, a red light that comes, it's on a, a switch that when it goes vertical it turns on. First of the night, a daylight bourbon. Hit the glow in the dark Yamamoto grub tipped with a little bit of sucker meat. Got the stink off, but now we got a tag. I've caught bourbon during the daytime, but once the sun starts to set is when the bourbon bite picks up. One of the biggest questions I've heard asked is, what habitat do anglers target burbot in? First thing he's going to be looking for are where are the rocks. Burbot are photosensitive, so they tend to shy away from daylight hours and are more active at nighttime or right during those crepuscular periods. And they like to hide in those rocks and crevices. Now we're talking. This feels pretty big. I don't know if it's a burbot. Burbot are usually caught shallow. We've got our gear spread out from 10 to 30 feet. Our best depth tonight is 15 feet. Oh, no, it's burbot. It's not that big, but that's a burbot. Biologist hope to tag at least 50 burbot with these internal pit tags this year for the bash. 0051. All of the information gathered. Okay. 15.8. Helps biologists understand what these fish eat. Perfect technique. Their movements, growth, and population. Sweet, buddy. When we did our netting this year, we saw a slight decrease up here in the upper reaches of the reservoir. We did see an increase down in the canyon reach of the reservoir, so down in Utah. Do you think anglers are having a, an impact at all? Yes. I definitely think anglers are having an impact, you know, especially a more localized impact in some of the areas that get hit the hardest. <laughs> For example, like around Buckboard Marina when it freezes, you know, there's just a lot of anglers that target burbot in those areas. Woo! It's, it's a good thing though, and we'll take any bit of exploitation that we can get. This big fish of the night. Yeah, it is. 24 and a half. A burbot can eat prey about one third of its size. He's loving your glow in the dark camera. <laughs> They've had a significant impact on the smallmouth at Flaming Gorge, but they prey on all species, kokanee, rainbows, lake trout, you name it. 
It seems like they're here to stay, and we're hoping that our lake trout that are in the reservoir are gonna start helping us out. It seems like we've seen the last few years more lake trout consuming juvenile burbot. There we go. Nice. Yeah, I don't understand. Little guy. Nice. And he ate that big old Yamamoto. It's really cool, you know, to just know that Perfect. people are coming out here to take advantage of it, have a good time. We've had a relatively There we go. Let's go get him tagged. Good track record of safety. Yeah. And I'm proud of that too, you know. All right, buddy. Someone hopes to see you in a couple days. Hey, and if people are first coming up to this uh, burbot batch for the first time, or maybe they didn't have success the last time they were here, you've got a really good about nine minute instructional video on, on YouTube, on our KSL Outdoors YouTube channel. Right, yeah. Yep. How to fish Flaming Gorge Burbot. Yep, Jared put it together for us, and it's just kind of a beginner's guide, I guess, to coming out and targeting burbot, you know, everywhere, from, or anything from where to start, you know, where how to target them. and What to use. And, yeah, and how to jig for them, how to dead stick for them, how to run tip ups, stuff like that, so. Cool, well check it out. Again, it's uh, How to Fish Flaming Gorge Burbot with our buddy Ryan Mosley. There's still some big burbot here. Yep, there still is. Very good. Well, tag away. Put yep. him in. We already tagged him, so here he goes. Hopefully somebody's going to catch him uh, in a couple weeks. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? It's fun to, to, to tag burbot, and especially for you guys and what you guys learned from him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we document growth, uh, a lot of movement, obviously. Yeah. So even though we're tagging here, these fish could end up a mile away, John? Anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> Seven miles, they could be caught 20 miles from here come derby time. Okay. Yeah, we've even tagged fish way up reservoir, like towards the inflow up by fire hole, and they've showed up down in the canyon. Really? So they're moving? They're moving. We'll get up here to the burbot bass, sign up, get a team together, come up here, catch a bunch of burbot. Who knows? I mean, last year, eight tags. Someone's got to catch them. Yep, someone's going to win some money. Mm -hmm. Burbotbass.com. I'm Adam Eco, KSL Outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.